Hello, you've reached Gloria with Farmstead Talk, and I am here today with Lake Ann of the Kentucky Holler Homestead, and she's representing her state of Kentucky today in this homesteading interview. Welcome, Lake Ann, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure. So go ahead and tell the folks um, where they can find you on social media. Okay, you can find us on Instagram and on Facebook under Kentucky Holler Homestead. Okay, very good. So let's go get started. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, your family and where you're currently living. Okay, I'm 28 years old. I'm a mother to four and wife to a United States Air Force veteran. We live in a little town called Blaine, Kentucky. And we have um, um, goats, cows, a ton of chickens. <laughs> okay. So tell me, um, so in your town that you're living in in Blaine, is that a rural area or is it a suburban area? Rural. Rural. Okay. And what does your property look like? How many, of, what type of land do you have? And um, We have seven acres. Um, a lot of it is hills. That's where we put the cattle and the goats. And um, then we have a bunch of flat that's for our garden and our raised beds. Okay. So how long have you been actually homesteading for? About three years. Okay. And on that land that you said some of it is flat, is it mostly wooded land? Yeah, we had to, um, we actually um, took down a lot of the trees and we're using the trees, the trees to build our cabin. Nice. And you said that in the area that you live that multiple family members have connecting grounds. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. And you're currently living in at your mom's now waiting to build. Well, you you tell them what are you going to be building? Yeah, we're um, building a house right now. We're building a four bedroom cabin and we're just trying to get everything situated and it's taken forever. <laughs> so I know you had mentioned before that you're you are building going through this building process with a VA loan. You yes. want to share a little bit about that VA loan and the process and how it worked? Um, the VA process was a lot easier to do with the building because we didn't have to have as much. The only thing that was different about getting the VA loan for building was you had to use their contractors. So the only contractors that we could really find that would do it would be, we did ones in Tennessee, and then there was another one in, te in Texas. Okay. And was the loan process pretty easy compared to other types of loans, would you say? or? Um, I think it was because it was a lot easier because but when you give them your information, all they have to do is just pull up his like DT-14 and get all of his information and records from the VA. Okay. So for other people that are out there that they want to utilize a VA loan, um, it's pretty easy to use them, mm -hmm. would you say? Okay. Yes. Share what type of animals that you have on the homestead. And um, right now we have cattle, we have Angus, and um, we have bait and goats. We have a lot of chickens. We have Rhode Island Red, um, Black Sex Link, um, we don't have any Cornish hens right now, but that's what we use for meat birds a lot. And we have um, some bar grog. Okay. And now the fainting goats, what are they used for? Just for the kids to play with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they love them. Okay. And then you also, what type of cattle do you have? Angus. Angus. Oh, yeah. Okay. And are you utilizing them? Um, for meat for your family? Are you selling them, selling offspring? How is that working? Um, the cattle right now we're using for meat and then later on when we get more we're going to eventually in the future have them taken to the auctions. Okay. Um, you had said that you come from a family of hunters. Tell me like what your experience is with that. What are they hunting for? Um, yes, we hunt for everything. We're used to, I grew up with a woman in the kitchen and a man works. 
and so and work some hunts and um, I mean I've been hunting but most of the time it's just my son and my husband and my brother and my dad and they'll go hunting and we hunt for squirrel, rabbit, deer, turkey, pretty much anything that comes in season. <laughs> That's and nice. then we use a lot of the deer meat. We make deer jerky, deer burgers. We utilize every every bit of meat we, we process. So it sounds like meat is a very good resource, wildlife for you to feed your yes. family. So that's kind of a blessing. So how does that work then? So the men go out and they hunt, um, and then do they somewhat process it and then bring it to the kitchen for the women to? Yeah, to they'll take. The package um, or? <laughs> yeah, they'll take and they'll skin everything out and then they'll bring it to us in pieces. Okay. And then we'll clean the rest of it and cut it up and cut off you know, the bad pieces and everything. Okay. The joint effort, right? So it's yes. good. Okay, what growing zone are you in? We are in 6B. Okay, and tell me what types of gardens that you have and like what are your gardening methods that you utilize? Um, well, we tried the greenhouse and it got blown away three times. So we didn't really, we wasn't really successful with our greenhouse. So we're definitely gonna try again um, not this year, but next year, we're going to try again with the greenhouse and see how it works out. Um, but last year, we just did, we did some raised beds. We did um, zucchini and raised beds, and they did really, really good. And then we, we do corn, green beans, and cucumbers. And we usually do those together so that the green beans can grow up the corn, the corn stalks. And then we grow a lot of different tomatoes, a lot of different peppers, um, cabbage. We grow a lot of cabbage because I end up canning it and making sauerkraut and it's used religiously <laughs> in our house. So besides using the raised beds, do you also have traditional beds where you're actually growing into the ground? Yes, yes, that's what all of my other, other plants just directly into ground. And so when you said you had a greenhouse, was it the wind that knocked it down or what happened with the greenhouse? Yes, we had a greenhouse and we put it together and it got blown up into the hills and got tangled up. So we got it back out, fixed it back up. Another thing of wind came, like it was really bad last year. The wind was crazy last year and it ended up just blowing it to where it got ripped and we couldn't use it. Yeah, I understand how the high winds work, so. Um, what about, so you have large gardens and you have a lot of produce that comes out of these gardens. What is your favorite food preservation? And like how much of the food would you say that you can a year? Um, we can last year at least probably about 60 quarts of sauerkraut, um, we can green beans, we can a lot of those, and those are used pretty much every other night. Um, we can a lot of tomato juice, tomato sauce, salsa. We use a lot of salsa. We make a lot of salsa out of tomatoes. Mm -hmm. um, then the um, we froze kale last year because we, we grew kale last year, and that was the first year we grew it, and it grew like crazy. We had a huge amount of kale and I take in and put it in the seal bags and vacuuming them and putting them away so we still we use those and we kind of use those like grains we kind of fix those with mixed greens okay would you say that you do more canning than you do freezing yes yes yeah. it just takes more resources for electricity to store it but a lot of people prefer freezing, so. Yeah. Tell me the story about um, the Japanese wine berries, I believe you call them. Oh, yes. How, you came, about, the... how, you, how you came about knowing about them and the story behind that. Yes, well, we were taking a trip in Maryland and we came um, across this abandoned, it was an abandoned, I can't remember the name of it, but it was like an army um, where they stored like their ammo and everything and it got shut down so it was just abandoned 
and a lot of people go there and take pictures and everything so we went and I seen this fairy and it was so pretty and I had like these little fuzzy things all over it and so I posted a picture on my homestead Instagram page and I was like what kind of berry is this and everybody was coming back it's a lime berry it's a Japanese lime berry and there's another name for it it's Rubus something but I can't pronounce it and okay. um so we were out driving one day and we was going up the holler where my husband's friend and they were just all cons over the on the hillsides driving up through there so we picked a bunch and then i ended up making jam out of it and i got second place in one of the jam competitions in town very nice very nice story and then you did say did you actually find more that were closer to your home yeah we uh, we found more and we're going to try to transplant some we're we're looking into seeing when's the best time to transplant and everything to see if we can get some going that's a good idea tell me about the history of your family farms um, with the tobacco fields okay yeah i grew up working in tobacco um, I would come home from school and have to work in tobacco. During the summers, that's all I did was work in backer. Um, my mom and my aunt and my uncle would be the ones on the tractor. And then I would have to be the pigtail. And the pigtail is we walk behind the, the tractor. And if my mom or my aunt would miss one of the tobacco plants going in the ground, then I would have to dig it by hand and plant it by hand. And then after that, then you have to, you know, let them grow. And then once they start to flower, you got to cut the tops off from them. And then you got to go through and you got to cut all the stalks down eventually. You got to hang them up to dry. And then you got to take them back down and strip them. And my uncle was actually stacking some up and he was throwing the backer sticks back to me and I was stacking the backer sticks up in the loft and he threw one back at me and I have a big huge scar in the middle of my forehead from him like knocking me out cold <laughs> with one of the backer sticks. Mm -hmm. Well you have something a memory of that that's never yeah. gonna leave you right? <laughs> no. Um, how many generations would you say or is that like your grand your grandfather's time did he start that or was it more than my grandfather's father started it so wow. it was my grandfather and uh, my great-grandfather and my uncle and my mom and my aunt kind of took it over and then it just started to get to work where you had to have certain regulations and everything here for the backer and then i believe they shut the the company down that we did take her back or two. I think they ended up shutting it down. So we ended up getting out of it. And then in, in what year did you, did, did that business stop? That would have been probably around 2000, I say probably around 2004, 2000, or 2002. And then after that happened, you had this blank slate then of all this land so then how did you guys utilize that land we ended up planting corn and beans and potatoes and we ended up just making a big garden out of it and i live up a huge holler and it's nothing but families all my aunts and my uncles and my cousins and so we it was just kind of like a holler garden <laughs> and everybody who ever wanted to plant whatever we'd go you know and plant whatever and then we'd go and work it and weed it and it was a lot to keep up with that big of a garden yeah i bet because we had my uncles and a big flat of my uncles and then we actually raised so much backer that my uncle um contracted and rented another piece of property on down the road so we would have to go on down the road and work that field too and was this all by hand or did you have tractors? Um, my uncle would have a tractor and it has on the back of it, there's two seats on it. And then there's this little wheel in the middle and the wheel turns and there's a water that runs. So we had to keep filling the water up <laughs> too. But the wheel turns and whenever it turns, it puts it, the, the, you put the backer, the backer plant on top and you would flip and you're, the backer plant would go down in the ground. So if my mom or my aunt, they would, you know, want to each take turns putting the plant in, but if they missed one, then 
I would have to put it in by hand. Wow. But then after the tobacco fields were done, when you started reutilizing that land, was that machine still or that tractor still in use for other plants? Yeah, we would plow. Yeah, we would plow, plow it up and everything. Okay. We still got the tractor, but the tractor doesn't work anymore. <laughs> yeah. Tell me um, how religion or spirituality plays a role in your homesteading life. Um, it was always very, it was used religiously, like my mammal, you know, we would always use everything from the garden and my mammal used to have a big, huge flower bed and my mam my papa would go and he would cut fresh flowers for her every Sunday and we would always have Sunday dinner. But if you didn't go to church, you didn't get Sunday dinner. <laughs> wow. She was very, very... I don't know about that. Like, if you did not go to church, you did not get Sunday dinner. <laughs> Is she still alive? No, she. No. I'm the I'm the baby of the family, so my parents are a little bit older than usual than the kids my age. So they passed away when I was really young. So, have any of those practices been brought down into your lifestyle? Like, do you utilize any of that practice, yes. like with going to church or? saying to your kids if you don't go to church and yeah to I'm kind of more lenient I let you know I I like to you know raise my kids in the church and stuff but it's more I'm more lenient towards them because we always have family Sunday family dinner we always have family dinner and most mm -hmm. of the time like my nephew or somebody will come out but it's always everybody knows that we have you know Sunday family dinner so if you want to come eat come eat <laughs> right right sounds lovely tell me about your um husband's time um as a veteran overseas okay yeah he was in the air force um he was in the delayed air force program whenever 9 11 hit and so that made him you know just want to get in even more and he was he went to air force school in texas and then he got sent to arizona he was in Arizona for a little bit, and then he got stationed in Pope Air Force Base, which is in North Carolina. And then he got sent over to the Middle East, and he was part of the Iraqi Freedom. And so he was in Qatar, and um, he was a um, crew chief on C-130s. And so he did a lot of work on C-130s, and there's actually a, um, in, um, Ohio and Dayton there's an Air Force um, Wright Pat and there's an Air Force Museum and it's actually really neat because the uh, plane that he worked on while he was in training and everything is in the museum so wow. it's really neat. Wow so you had mentioned to me that he had an accident while he was there. Yeah he had an accident so he's um a hundred percent um, disabled and he took the honorable discharge. Okay. And so how is the homesteading lifestyle benefiting not only your family, but him individually? Oh, it is amazing. Like when we first, um, um, he got out and everything, we lived in the city and it was always, you know, couldn't go to sleep because there was so many, so much noise. And he was always worrying about this or worrying about that because we had so many close neighbors. And since we've, you know, lived out and he has time to work with the chickens and everything, his PTSD has, it's better than medicine. That's it really great. is. I'm glad to hear that. So it's just a proven fact, you know, that gardening and it heals the soul, it heals the land. Yeah, it's it heals very, people. yeah. Yeah. Um, we're going to getting ready just to wrap up. If you can sum up in one word, what your homesteading experience has meant to you, what would that word be? Family. Cause it's a family. It's a family thing. Like my kids love it. Um, most kids now just want to play in the house on, on their playstations or whatever and stuff. But my kids, I have to, you know, kick them in the house because they don't want to come in. But it's, you get to spend time with family, you get to, you know, work together, show them good work ethic and everything. And 
it's it's really special to us. That's wonderful. Like, and thank you so much for sharing your story with everybody. And thank you for this interview. It's been lovely. Um, and you have a great day. Thanks again. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.